This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Swiss Future Farm. But before that, this video is brought to you by Mark DuPont and Mighty Mouse 05. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Swiss Future Farm can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now, before we get into the description, I want to give you a little bit of background on the Swiss Future Farm. Back in 2019, right after Farm Sim 19 released, during the summer, we had the FS19 Mod Contest. And part of the FS19 Mod Contest was a category of basically map rep map creation to reproduce a realistic area. And the Swiss Future Farm was that specific area. The farm was defined, the area around the farm was defined, and map authors were to do their best to recreate as accurately as possible the Swiss Future Farm and the area around it. Oxygen David won that contest, and as a result, he was allowed to finish the map because the map didn't have to be finished for the contest. Just done well enough in order to obviously win. He was given time to finish the contest, and later the map was released for Farm Sim 19. And now the map is back for Farming Simulator 22. So let's read the description. Welcome to Swiss Future Farm. This map is based in Switzerland, recreated and converted for FS22 with improvements. The area has been expanded with additional fields, working silos at the farm, a hayloft, pig, sheep, cow, and horse husbandries, and animated slurry pit. Access has been improved around the farm to improve in gameplay experience, more traffic, enhanced PDA, replica of real life farm and surroundings, 40 fields with missions, small, medium, and, as the description says, huge. Two cell points and BGA, sawmill, etc. This map does include collectibles. The 20 collectibles from Holt Bay of the Rune. And then there are lots of custom models, models built. Now, as an example of how realistic this map is, here we have the preview image. This is clearly an aerial photo of the real Swiss Future Farm. If you take a look at my thumbnail, you'll see a very similar shot here. It's it's slightly different angle, so I can get a decent thumbnail picture, have the title and have the PDA and not obstruct too much of the farm. But as you can see, Oxygen David has done a very, very good job with respect to the replication of the farm, of the various buildings, and how it all looks. With that, let's go ahead and jump on in. We are going to use the mods that we typically use when we take a look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. I will tell you, if we load this map up in farm manager mode, the farm will look exactly how it does right here, with the exception of not having any farm machinery, and you do not own any land at the start. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. So here we have the PDA resumed all the way out. And I have to say, the map is a little bit bigger than I was initially thinking it was based on the screenshot of the map page over on the farmingsimulator.com's mod hub. I would say right now the map is probably about the a third of a standard map as far as the play area goes. We do have all of the standard crops available to us here in Farm Sim 22 listed in the crop filter section. And if we like take a look at our lands area, you'll see that we start out by owning the entirety of the town and what I would typically call the unbuyable areas. And that is going to cost you zero dollars to buy. So you can do that in all play modes without any worry about how much money it's going to cost. That is going to include the main farm area here, as well as the town surrounding that and then all of the cell points. Now, as far as fields that we own, we own field four, field 26, 
11, 12, and 13. We also own field 18, which includes the horse pasture. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. We use this screen to show us all of the available farm lands, how big those farm lands are, if those farm lands include any fields, what fields they include, and then ultimately how much those farm lands are going to cost us. So you can see we start up at owning farmland one, which is all of the unbuyable land, and it's going to cost you zero dollars to buy. So we can get it in any play mode without worrying about our bank account. We have Farmland 2, which includes field 4, is 3.3 hectares in size and costs $198,000. I'm going to go ahead and just scroll through this list, and you can cross-reference the field numbers with the field calculator that we are just about to go take a look at to then ultimately have a general idea of how much those fields are going to cost you and how big the fields are in comparison to how big the farmlands are that the fields contain. Here we have our field calculator list, and this is going to show us the actual field sizes of all the fields that we own and do not own. So, for example, field four is actually 2.85 hectares in size. Let's go ahead and scroll through this listing. You see that the fields are going to range anywhere from about a third of a hectare all the way up to just over four hectares in size. I wouldn't really say huge. I wouldn't really define those as being huge but they are decent sized fields. If we take a look at our crop counter screen, we can see that we do have the generic crop counter that is available to us here in Farm Sim 22. And if we look at our prices screen, you're gonna see that we start out by having the ability to sell all of the base game crops with the exception of olives. For whatever reason, we do not have the ability to sell olives, but we do have the ability to grow olives on the map. Now, we also do not have the ability to sell seeds, which isn't that big of a deal. We do have the ability to sell wool, eggs, and milk. Silage, hay straw, and grass can also be sold. And as we move down to our production points, we do have the ability to sell most, most of the base game productions, but not all of the base game productions. In fact, for we are missing the ability to sell planks on this particular map. So we do not have the ability to sell olives or planks. There's no way to buy bulk lime. So we do not have any bulk lime buy points, but that does not factor into the score. And we also do not have a stone crusher pre-placed on the map. So if you wish to play with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own stone crusher. Take a look at our vehicle overview screen. You're going to see that all of our vehicles are owned. None of them are leased and they are all fairly new. We do have some pastures on the map. As I said earlier, we have a pig, cow, sheep, and horse pasture. We do have contracts available, and we own the biogas plant, which actually is the only production on this map. We do own the biogas plant at the start. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting equipment. We start out with the Fint Fabric 515C, the Baltra G105, pair of those actually three of those we have the massey ferguson 5s 105 and we have a pair of those as far as harvesters go we have the ideal 9t harvester we have the fent katana 650 forage harvester we have the half pipe hp 20 trailer we have the power flow 40 foot rain header to go with our fent harvester we then have the limpkin samar simmer uh, yeah the 9 slash 500k cultivator, as well as the Horsch Perino 3FX cultivator. We have the Joker 4CT disc harrow. We have the Lincoln Solitar 23 planter hopper. Okay, so this is a planter hopper. This isn't actually a planter. So that is rather interesting that we only have the hopper. We don't actually have the planter unit as our starting equipment. We do have the TS1520 slash M3 weeder. We have a Q3M front loader. And then for the front loader, we do not have, we do not have, sorry, that's it's just rather interesting. It's throwing me for a loop. We do not have any front loader tools. We have telehandler tools, but we don't have a telehandler. A little confusing. We have a universal bucket, a pallet fork, a wrapped bale handler, and a bale fork. Again, for a telehandler, not for the front loader that we have at the start. 
We also have the Nardi N6045 header trailer for our 40 foot power flow brain header. Take a look at our mods and DLCs. You'll see that there are no modded vehicles or equipment included with this particular map. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look around the farm. First thing we're gonna do is go around the back here because our sleep trigger is actually on the other side of the street from all of the farm buildings. So a bit of what looks like kind of a dormitory area here. And that is where we're gonna be able to sleep through the night. And then we'll make our way across the street. Remembering the preview image that we just took a look at just a few minutes ago. Here we have the parking lot we saw in the bottom of that image. Here we have the Swiss Future Farm. With a community, you are here. And then we'll come on inside to the farm area. Now, this farm is permanently embedded on the map. In all play modes, the farm is here. That means you cannot sell any of the buildings on the farm with the exception of one thing, and that is the fuel tank. So as such, the map is going to get a zero for can the farms be customized. Now I fully understand the purpose of this map. I gave you the purpose of the map in the intro, but we can't be changing our ranking criteria and our review criteria simply because the review criteria doesn't happen to fit within the purpose of any one given map. If we start changing how we review maps and what type of criteria we have on every given Mac, well then the review number is meaningless because it doesn't represent one score for one map and another score for another map against each other. So with that said, yes, I do understand the purpose of this map. I do understand why you cannot sell any of the buildings, but it doesn't matter because that is one of the scoring criteria. So as an absolute perfect score, the best this map could do is a four out of five. So just remember that when we do get around to the final scoring. We do have our workshop trigger located right here. And that does extend outside the door a little bit, so you don't have to worry about not being able to go within the garage. And the rest of these doors are not operable on these buildings at all. Got a little back way into the farm. Right there. We do have the ability to use this building. These build short doors do slide open. As you can see there. This map includes three farm silos and all of the farm silos will store all of your grain crops. A typical silo will store those. So we have a dump point. We have our output pipe located right there. We have our forage harvester conveniently parked in the way for our use of this silo. This is the only thing that you can sell on the map, this fuel tank, and the fuel tank is empty at the start. Lots of vehicle storage and implement storage on the map. So we have our Voltra. Here's our front loader arms and again our telehandler tools. As opposed to front loader tools. We have another part of our building. Then we have a representation of which fields are in use by the Swiss Future Farm here. We have the Swiss Future Farm kind of office building or classroom building. 
but uh, it cannot be going into. Here we are just on the other side of that parking lot. And I'm checking all the tractors because I want to see which one includes the front loader arm bracket. I'm opening these doors so you can see which doors do open and which doors do not open. See, all of these doors do function. I knew what half of these signs said. Now, this particular building is just structural. We cannot make use of this building at all. And then, interesting enough, these silage bunkers currently in the 1.0 release do not have actual triggers associated with them. They do have collisions, but as you can see, when we go inside of them, they don't actually have the silage triggers this may get updated in a future update i know it has been reported i'm just not sure if these are supposed to be decorative or if they're actually supposed to have the ability to have silage made with those let's make our way over here to the slurry pit so here we have our slurry pit Around the corner, we then have our pig facility. And we're going to have 30 pigs in this particular pen. We have our food trough. We have our water trough. And let's go ahead and check out our pigs. You can see their pigs are going to take water and food. Food, they do not require straw. And then we'll go across the little stream here. First thing we're going to find when we go across the stream is our hayloft. So we have our dump point and our fill point for the hayloft. The hayloft will store straw and hay, just like any other base game FS22 hayloft. And this particular building is simply decorational it doesn't serve any purpose at all that is a train by the way running through it's awful loud when it comes through here we have farm silo 2 and it again stores standard crops standard grain crops it is not a fermenter it just works with standard crops we have our slurry point we have our food trough and we have our cow buy trigger located right here. 15 cows in this particular building. Now this is set up to be the calving barn. But there aren't functional cows or calves on this particular map. And we'll make our way over here, and this is going to be our sheep area. 15 sheep in this particular pen or pasture. We have our food trough, and then we have our water trough. So let's go ahead and just check our animals once again, make sure. So cows are going to require straw and food. And then Sheep are going to require water and food. And then the wool is going to spawn over here. 
So we have two corner markers kind of to indicate where our wall is going to spawn in at. And then if we continue down across the street, once again, we have our ideal harvester. We have our harvester header. Then we have this large building. It is currently empty. Then we have our third farm silo. This is a standard FS22 silo. And again, this is going to hold our standard grain crops, just like the other two silos on the farm. And with that, that is going to conclude our farm tour of the Swiss Future Farm. I'm going to go ahead and get set up for the fly around. We're going to fly around the map and take a look at the fields how the lay of the land and then the cell points we're going to then come by the shop and drive around to the various cell points which isn't really going to take a whole lot of time but before we do that let's take a look at our soil map this map does include the generic soil map that is included with the precision farming mod itself it does not have a custom soil map we have in the north a good bit of loam and silty clay as well as down to the south loam and silty clay and then the big section just to the east of the main farm is mostly loamy sand and sandy loam. Now before we get too far into the aerial tour I do want to try to come over here and replicate that preview shot that we saw on the loading page real quick. So I think we had something about like, about like this. And boy does this look just like the map loading page sands people and machinery. So we've got our main farm here. Let's get a little bit of altitude. Get a little bit of a spin. And a lot of this town area is area that we really, really do not have the ability to go into. So for example, the map edge is right here right past the road and we'll have the ability to kind of get up close to some of these houses along the road but we do not have the ability to go too far past that line simply because of how the map borders are set up now with respect to production being built into the map well the map includes just the biogas plant and that is the only production that is built into the map. And in looking around and doing our flyover, you're going to notice that there really isn't a whole lot of available space that isn't already farmland for the placement of additional production facilities. So with that point, and because I really don't like the idea of having to sacrifice farmland for production i'd rather like to see production facilities set aside that isn't already farmland we're going to give the map a half of a point with respect to production being built in and or areas set aside for such now i just flew through that for a purpose of checking for the collisions so the high tension power lines here do not have collisions on the towers you won't have to worry about running into those with hired help or having hired help completely skip areas of the field as a result of these power towers. So coming through the map, we're going to drive under the bridge and then we're going to need to make an immediate left in order to get to the rest of the map because that is where all of the other action 
is going to be found. We've got two cell points over here to the left. The main vehicle shop is to our right. And then directly in front of us, we have the horse pasture. And we'll go ahead and settle down there and get one horse. Beyond the horse pasture, we have our animal buy trigger, our BGA. And then off in the distance, we have three more cell points. And that is pretty much the entirety of the map. So we have five horses in this pasture. And then we have a water trigger and a food trough trigger. And you're going to have to come around to the back here in order to put food in because the trigger is around the back. It is not in front. Okay. Uh, I saw something blue inside of there. I was like, what is that? And there was just the, the little jumping areas where you could put water in and have a water jump. So with respect to, once again, the map including the ability to sell all of the base game products, props, and animal outputs, we are going to give the map three quarters of a point there. We are taking a quarter of the point off because we do not have the ability to sell olives or planks on this particular map. We do not have a stone crusher, but the stone crusher does not play into the score necessarily. We're really just taking a quarter point off because of the planks and olives. I would like to see in a map update the inclusion of planks and olives. That way the map could, if it was ever rescored, reach a full point on that metric. As we already talked, the map is going to lose a full point on can the farms be customized because they are all static. And if that is what you're looking for, if you want to play on a as realistic as possible Swiss future farm area, then the map is perfect for you. But if for any reason you don't want to do, let's say, cows, and you want to get rid of the cow barn because you want to put something else down or just have some space, well, that's not going to work out so good for you here on this particular map. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique. We're going to give the map three quarters of a point there as well. For the most part, the buildings around the main farm are not making use of the new 3D or texture technique that is available in Farm Sim 22. The ground textures are, although there are some fairly limited base game ground textures. We're not talking about having a whole bunch of custom textures here. I believe the dirt is custom. But aside from that, I think the rest of these textures are fairly standard as well as the plants. Looking through the buildings, there are no custom buildings, no custom silos, silo extensions, or containers. So none of the new buildings that are at the main farm can be placed either. Here we have our workshop trigger. Let's go ahead and get to Mahindra. Got a little area for our vehicles to spawn in. Not a whole lot of area. So we're not going to be buying a whole ton of equipment and having it spawn in here and then having the ability to come and get it. We have our customized repair, sell, trade, and repaint trigger located right here. Let's go ahead and hop in our Mahindra. do have access to this wonderful large grass area beside the horse pasture. We have the horse pasture itself, which we've already taken a look at. Fields 21 and 22 up on the hillside. They are a part of the base play area just beyond the houses though that is going to be where your map order is going to start pretty narrow area in order to get in here and load up your animals if you wish to load them up manually there we go
And then we have our BGA. This is, again, the only production facility that we have on the map. We have our digester. We have our interactive icon. We have our dump point for slurry and our collection point for digestate. Now, the description mentioned a sawmill, but it doesn't appear to actually be a sawmill on the map. So I'm not sure if maybe that is a mistake or if uh, or if there's something coded wrong because the sawmill doesn't come up when you get a listing of all of the productions that are available on the map. So here we have three dump stations. One, two, and three. Just pick which one you want to go to, right? No. Well, they are all distinct. And the one on the left is going to be Farm Store Bay 1. Then we have the General Store Bale cell point in the middle. Then we have General Store Bay 2 to the right. So the Farm Store Bay 1, Bale cell point, General Store Bay 2 to the right. Now the last metric is going to be, are the trigger and player interactive areas clearly marked? I believe that they are clearly marked. And as such, we are going to give the map a full point on that metric. So that is going to score the map three out of five. Now remember, we talked about how the map did not have a customable, customizable farm. And as a result, that was going to be a full point off. So a three out of four, basically, because the best the possible map could do is a four out of five. So then down here we have two cell points. Which is which? Well, let's find out. So to our right, we have Farm Store Bay 2. And to our left, we have General Store Bay 1. That overall is Swiss Future Farm. There's not a lot going on. It's not that big of a map. It is a rather beautiful map as far as the decorative elements go. A lot of the houses, though, are repeated. So that can get a little bit of maybe a little monotonous with the repetition. Now, that may be the way it is in real life. It's hard to tell. I don't know personally if uh, if in real life a lot of these houses do look identical to each other or not. If we continue up the road and around to our left, we're just going to go to a you know map boundary area coming under the bridge here. We're then going to be able to go into the farm multiple so multiple ways into the farm from here and then we can continue on and around to the south western part of the map let me know guys again what you all think of swiss future farms and until next time Happy farming.